habari yako nzuri umemkaje na mtoto ah tujambo mtoto endeleaje ah mimi kama daktari wa nyanjani kazi yangu ni kuhakikisha zile household zangu wiki moja na tembelea household tatu amepeza clinic lini mwezi uliopita mm-hmm. tayari amepata chanjo ya miezi tisa mm, alipata mm-hmm. mm-hmm. kwa kuzitembelea huwa nataka kuhakikisha kama watoto wa kama kun, wanatumia vyoo kama kuna shimo ya kurusha taka kamba ya kuandikia nguo sasa kumsajili mtoto mm-hmm. nitaanza kusajili kwanza we mama mm-hmm. nipate ID namba yako mm-hmm. yenye nitamsajili mtoto wako hizi zanisaidia tena sana kwa sababu ilipokuwa sijapata hii ilikuwa hata ni vigumu ku communicate na chuzi wangu kwa dispensary sasa hii ni muhimu tunataka kutuma na hii message kwa watu wa medic mobile mm-hmm. ili nini kujulisha mimi nikipata ujumbe kukuhimiza wewe uende clinic before i had this mobile phones it was a hard work for me you see to take the records but for now things are easy only taking the data sending the message they remind me and i take the reminder to the pregnant mother it is easy huyu huwa ananisaidia wakati alinisaidia wakati nilipokuwa na hii mimba inanisaidia kwa sababu wakati wote nitakapopatwa na shida nikimpigia ninampata wakati wote hata kama ni usiku wa saa ngapi ninasikia kupendezwa sana Ah asante kwa kunisikiliza. Nitakutembelea siku nyingine mm. ili kuangalia mtoto wenyewe endelea vizuri. Ah asante kwa kujeni. Angalia kunifahamisha wewe mambo. Asante sana. In this community they have chosen me to work for them. Na hata wana kijiji wangu pia nao wananisikiza. Na kwa vile wananijua, wananifahamu na wamenizoea ndio maana ninafanya hii kazi na ninaipenda. Mm. There's an art to making strange technologies more familiar. When I say familiar, I'm talking about a tool that fits into your life without causing unexpected hassles. This is particularly important for technology designers who work in settings that are foreign to them. So, I'd like to share a story that begins in Malawi. In the middle of 2009, I hadn't been there for very long when I first came across a small package on the ground bundled in plastic bags. And I paused to wonder what was bundled inside when a girl ran up and kicked it. And I realized that's not a package, that's a soccer ball. It struck me because I had been looking directly at it, but I didn't see it as a ball until I saw the game. I like to reflect on this moment because I think it shows that I was unable to recognize an unfamiliar object until I saw it from the perspective of these kids. It shows that seeing this as a ball took more than an image, it took some imagination and reimagining objects is deeply important wherever we have a strange technology and we hope to make it familiar let's take this idea to mobile phones that you only know the object when you see it in action i've often heard these phones referred to as dumb phones to contrast them with smartphones but i no longer see these phones as dumb the phone in the middle is perhaps mildly fancier followed by the gray nokia but it's actually the cheapest phone the ultra low cost handset that i would invite you to reimagine this is the first kind of phone that went mass market in malawi and thanks in part to a popular political song it came to be known as mosewalilu there's something in that name it translates to the moses of today the metaphor invoked the biblical hero the idea was that this first common person's phone wouldn't leave anybody behind it would lift up the whole people of malawi out of the oppression of poverty and disconnectedness and take them to a promised land it was very powerful for me to discover this because at the time i was in malawi with the aim of equipping health workers with phones so that they could provide better care 
In one project, our goal was to eliminate stockouts of life-saving medicines. Due to a widespread communication gap, hospitals and drug warehouses are often unaware of which clinics have run out of which medicines at any particular time. The result is that people arrive at these clinics, often after they have walked for hours, only to be turned away. Our idea was to equip that rural nurse with a phone so that when she runs out of a medicine, she can send a message, and the hospital, in turn, can send someone to resupply her with medicine. We did this initially with an open source Java application uh, that enabled the health workers to submit forms based data using a mid-range feature phone. At the time, phones this expensive were quite unfamiliar to most health workers in Malawi. But we hosted a whole day of training, and people seemed to be getting on quite well. So we sent them back out to their facilities and waited, hopefully, for the data to come streaming in. Within about a week, we started receiving phone calls about their difficulties. For example, I deleted the app from my phone. And I've put months of work into this project. I had a knee-jerk reaction. I thought, oh, you deleted the app. That was dumb. So that was my first instinct. I blamed them. And I'm willing to confess that. My name's Isaac. I'm a blamer. But I took a deep breath, and I thought, there has to be a more productive way forward. We'll just have to host more training. So to get ready for the training, we started calling people and asking, would you describe what you were doing when you made the mistake? How, how did you delete the app? And one person explained, well, it happened when I left the phone at the electricity shop. In fact, I wasn't even there at the time. I think other people had been playing with it. And this was eye-opening for me, because I had never heard of electricity shopping before we would go on to discover that many of the health workers were going to shops like this one, where you could charge a mobile phone for around 50 cents. At the time, only about a third of households in Malawi were connected to the electrical grid, and yet more than half the population owned a mobile phone. So these kinds of electricity shops were a vital part of the infrastructure that enabled mobile phones to spread throughout Malawi and much of the region. In many of these electricity entrepreneurs will take a deep cycle battery, like a car battery, to a town where they can charge it on the electrical grid, and then haul that big battery out to a rural village and sell the electricity phone by phone. Seeing this infrastructure made me appreciate what a complex situation they were in. Imagine having to go to the grocery store to charge your phone. And then I remembered the soccer ball. It was humbling to admit it, but even as the resident technology expert, I didn't know what tools I was deploying until I saw them in action. I also realized with this context that more training wasn't going to solve the problem. Retraining, re-educating, rehabilitation, they only work if the problem was human error. But in this case, the problem had to do with the electricity infrastructure and the fact that we had used an unfamiliar phone that the neighbors found interesting and wanted to play with. So when I examined the context of a seemingly simple technology initiative, I'm now much more focused on the concrete daily activities, not broad concepts like culture or capacity, but the everyday things people do, like charging their phone at an electricity shop. And we would go on to find another practice that was very important in explaining why many of these health workers had more trouble with the unfamiliar phones than they had had in other projects with locally prevalent phones. That had to do with purchasing airtime. In countries where many people don't have bank accounts or a steady supply of cash on hand, it's much more common to use prepaid airtime vouchers or scratchets rather than post-pay phone contracts. One can purchase airtime at a shop like this. You'll find them on every street corner uh, in major cities and even in very remote villages. And this is possible because as much as 17 cents of every dollar spent on airtime 
goes to subsidizing the network of airtime distributors. Many people will see these airtime distributors simply as micro-entrepreneurs, but it's also possible to see them as a distributed network of income-generating peer educators. Quite simply, if you have a problem with your phone in a country like Malawi, there is a phone expert on every street corner. You buy some airtime, you can ask your questions. So this learning infrastructure became a very important part of uh, how mobile phones spread throughout Malawi and much of the African continent. But there's a catch. Most airtime distributors have the cheapest, most basic phones. And so they could only be a learning resource for our health workers if we were equipping those health workers with the basic, locally familiar phones. This is when I became quite fixed on the idea of re-implementing our data collection forms on the basic phones. At the time, the conventional wisdom was that these familiar or dumb phones couldn't run apps. But I had heard a rumor that M-Pesa, which is a massively popular mobile banking service in Kenya, was available on even the cheapest phones. And so I flew there to investigate. And what I found was that they had achieved this by not installing the M-Pesa software on the phone itself, but instead installing it on the SIM card. This is the small chip that goes into the back of every standard GSM phone. And conventional wisdom at the time held that only mobile network operators could put an app on the SIM card. But eventually I found a small manufacturer that was producing paper-thin parallel SIM cards. And because they were so thin, we could slide them underneath an ordinary SIM card, use the ordinary SIM card to connect to the phone network, and our paper-thin SIM for health apps. And so we developed the first SIM apps for health, and they're now being used by health workers in a number of countries to submit routine reports using the kinds of phones that were already in their hands. The insight here is that what initially looked like human error actually turned out to be an unintended yet very understandable consequence of the ways in which people were creatively working through the difficulties of their situation. This story isn't about the technology so much as it's about the general idea that we can make work visible. And when we do that, we have an opportunity to redesign our technologies so that they integrate more artfully. Perhaps I can illustrate this general design principle, make it familiar, by applying it to another technology. In 2009, the team at Medic Mobile was equipping nurses at facilities with a desktop application to manage the messages and the data that they were exchanging with community health workers. There was an obvious advantage to this technical approach. It was installed directly on a laptop at the facility, so they could check the data any time, even when they didn't have internet connectivity. But there was an obvious flaw to this approach as well. As our organization began, began to grow from a single facility to dozens of facilities, we didn't have a great mechanism for synchronizing the data across all of these facilities. In our field, the typical approach to the synchronization problem would be to advocate for web applications that are hosted in the cloud. The idea is that health workers at any number of facilities could simply get online and log into the same application. And this is increasingly possible because health workers, even at very remote facilities, are now accessing the internet over the mobile phone network. That said, this kind of web application is still an unfamiliar technology in many settings. And so when we use it, we run the risk of introducing unintended hassles. Here's an example. We go to this facility and we ask them, do you have mobile phone connectivity? And they say yes, so from our perspective, they have connectivity. But we stayed around a while longer, long enough to look out the window and ask, why do you have these papers hung up in the window? We were told that they had created these paper pouches to hang their phones in the window because that was the only part of this facility that got connectivity. So in fact, they had 
partial connectivity or occasional connectivity if you see it from their perspective. Here's a hard truth. Somebody who only has occasional connectivity is much more likely to fail at adopting a web-based technology. And if they do succeed, it's much more likely that they'll have to come up with workarounds to make it work, extra work. If our design principle is make it familiar, we're much more likely to see these workarounds and this potential for failure and turn it around into a design opportunity. The team at Medic Mobile did this by designing a web application that we could install directly on their laptops. So rather than hosting it in the cloud, it's hosted offline first on the machine in the facility. They can use it when they don't have an internet connection. However, it has the architecture of a web application, and whenever they do get connectivity, the data can synchronize in the background. New technologies that are unfamiliar have a tendency to introduce intended and unintended consequences. When the unintended consequences are negative, too often we're quick to blame human error on the part of the people who are using the technology. We're quick to blame poor behavior, when in fact it might be the electricity infrastructure or some other constraint. Whenever we say that retraining, re-educating, or rehabilitation are the solutions, in fact, we're implying that the problem was poor behavior. As an alternative, we could look beyond human error. Remember the soccer ball, and that we don't really know what tool we're deploying until we see it in practice. When we see technologies in practice, we have an opportunity to reimagine them from the perspective of the people who use them every day. Of course, it takes time to accompany health workers and to enter into the chaos of someone else's life for a while. But it's our greatest hope for beginning to see difficulty, surprise, and struggle more like discovery. It's our opportunity to reimagine a strange technology and make it familiar so that it just fits into people's everyday lives and ways of working. Thank you.